By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have two classic decks battling against each other. I have um, Stasis Volt taking on Troll Disco. And of course, Stasis Volt has really became more powerful now that Time Volt is no longer restricted. So you can play a full play set of Time Volt. So I think that's that's going to be fun. Now I'm going to do a very short deck deck on both of these decks as they're pretty well known, but I still want to discuss a few key cards. Now if you want to go straight to the game, you probably know what to do. You can check the description below. There you will find a timestamp and it will take you directly to game number one. As for me, I'm now going to continue with a short deck deck on both of these decks. The first deck that I would like to take a look at is the deck Stasis Vault. So this is a combination of the card Time Vault and Stasis. Now Time Vault used to be restricted, it's no longer restricted. So that means that you can play with four of these guys. Now what Time Vault does, it's an artifact for two and it says tap to gain an additional turn after the current one. So you can tap it just to get an extra turn, only for two mana. But here's the thing, it comes into play tapped. And if you want to untap it, you have to give your opponent an extra turn. So you're basically giving your opponent a turn and then later in the game you can get it back. Now, since the dawn of time, I should say the start of Magic, people have been combining this card with Twiddle because Twiddle is this handy little instant that can tap or untap a permanent. So you use Twiddle to untap Time Vault and then you can tap Time Vault to take an extra turn. So you're basically turning into in you're basically turning Twiddle <laughs> into a Time Vault. Now here's the thing when you combine this card with Stasis. When you've played Stasis, Stasis is an enchantment for one blue and one, and it reads players do not get an untap phase, but you have to pay one blue during your upkeep or Stasis is destroyed. Because you do not get an untap phase, it's very difficult to get enough mana to keep paying for your Stasis, because every time you tap a source like Mox Sapphire or an Island for a blue mana, when it's your turn again, you don't have an untapped step. So you don't get any new lands to uh, to pay for your stasis. So at a certain point, you can no longer pay the stasis and the stasis is destroyed. And then you have a really big problem because the problem is in your upkeep, the stasis get destroyed. And before your upkeep, you have your untapped step. So you miss your untapped step because of stasis. Then your stasis is destroyed in the upkeep. And that means that your opponent is the first one to untap with a full hand, having so much resources. So, I mean, then you probably are going to lose or are pretty close to losing when you're in that situation. Now, people have been trying to solve that by playing Boomerang, for instance, and other cards. But the fantastic thing about Time Vault is that when you can no longer pay for your stasis, you can simply say, okay, I'm going to untap my Time Vault now, and you're going to give your opponent an extra turn, which doesn't matter yet because your stasis is, is still active. So you're giving your opponent a worthless turn because he cannot untap his resources. He cannot play his hand out because his lands are tapped. He cannot attack because his creatures are tapped. So you have complete control. It's, it's really a prison deck. So then, it's your turn and you can no longer pay for your stasis. So your stasis is destroyed. So now you're probably thinking, hey, I have a problem because now my opponent gets to untap in the next turn. You don't have a problem because you can simply tap your time vault again and take an extra turn. So you're taking two turns in a row, meaning you are going to be the first one that gets to untap everything again. Meaning, uh, you can just play out a new stasis and have your luck again because in the stasis fold deck you're probably playing with four time volts and four stasis. Now interesting here to mention as well is that the most important card is not stasis. It's not time volt. It's not twiddle. It's not blue power. The most important card in my opinion here is howling mine because howling mine allows you to draw cards and what you want to do when you're playing in any combo deck it's drawing cards. You want to draw your key pieces. So that's why Howling Mine, I've put it here on the top of this uh, this little image, give it, giving it a special spot. That's for me, that's the key card in this deck. Now Black Vice is here as well, because Black Vice is the win con. You have to win in a certain way. When you have your stasis lock, you cannot your op opponent cannot play out any cards, meaning he or she is going to take a lot of Black Vice damage. Okay, so this is my uh, uh, deck tech for the Stasis Vault deck. We're now moving on to the second deck and I believe that is Troll Disco.
And Stasis Fold will have to take on this Troll Disco deck. And Troll Disco traditionally is a deck named after Nevenerl's Disc, Setch Troll, and Often Troll. Nevenerl's Disc is this very powerful artifact for four, comes into play tapped. When it untaps, you can pay one and uh, you can sacrifice it to destroy all creatures, enchantments, and artifacts. Now, the nice thing about destroying is that it allows you to regenerate your creatures. Such Troll and Afton Troll both have regeneration. So the idea is very simple. You destroy everything, but you can regenerate your creatures. Your creatures stay alive, you can attack with your creatures, and, hen and then win the game. So you have kind of control thanks to the Nevenerals disc. Um, of course, you combine it with some of the uh, traditional um, direct damage of red. Now, this deck has kind of been optimized throughout the years, and I think the most optimal version is actually being played today, where you're playing with your four discs, you're playing with only four Setch Trolls, so no longer the Often Troll. A 2-2 two, two for 3 is deemed too weak for this build. Instead, you're playing with four Mistress Factories. Mistress Factories are great because they can pump each other, and also it's a land. So when you activate your Nevernerals disc, your Mistress Factories, they are not affected by this. Well, at least if they're not creatures, but of course, you're not stupid enough to blow everything up when your Mistress Factories are actually factory workers. So it's a very good and strong combination. Now what this deck has as well, of course it has the black power cards, uh, Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist, but this deck also plays with blue power. Now we see it more often. Blue power is just too easy and too tempting to splash because it's only one blue and Ancestral Recall is just one blue, but Time uh, Walk for instance, is just one blue and one. So it's, it's very easy to splash and they're very, very powerful cards. I wonder, by the way, if uh, this player, his name is Avert, if he's also playing with a recall. I don't think so, because it's too blue, but we'll simply have to see. I haven't seen any deck lists. So this is basically Troll Disco in a nutshell. Now let's quickly go to the games and uh, see what's gonna happen here. Game number one, and we have uh, Hank HW underscore mtg on instagram i believe he's playing on the left so he's playing with the stasis fold with the orange sleeves and the player on the right is called avert he's playing with the white sleeves and he's playing with the troll disco deck let's have a look it looks like both players are keeping their hand oh okay i guess not <laughs> i guess they both took a mulligan i guess i cut that part of the game off so they're both starting with six cards there is a Mishra's Factory by Avert and a basic island there by Hank. And there's an Underground Sea attacking here for two. And passing turn. Just lovely. Another Underground Sea. I just, I love these Underground Seas. It's just beautiful art. An attack here. Again, using the Mox Jet this time to fuel the factory worker. And will we see a Setch Troll here? He has three mana. Actually, he had that the other... Second turn as well. Tapping, tapping four, okay. Oh, and there is a mana drain. And I think that's very important here. So that mana drain on that mind twist, that would have been pretty brutal. And I think that's probably why Avert was doubting a little bit about what to do. He decided to take the risk here. And there's that howling mine. And he can pay all this from that mana drain because Avert paid four in total for the mind twist. So that means he can now use that four mana. So he's using it to play a Chaos Orb and a Howling Mine. And um, as I mentioned in the deck deck, I think Howling Mine is the most important card in the Stasis Fold deck. And let's see what Avert can do now. And that's so nice about Mana Drain. Like Hank played that Mana Drain and he still has his islands up to counter a new threat. Of course, he's pretty light on cards in hand, I believe. And it looks like Avert is kind of in the tank here, paying three, playing a Setch Troll. That was the card he was considering playing last turn. And remember, it's 3-3 three, three because of that Badlands. Passing turn, there's a Sapphire hitting the table. Of course, drawing two because of that Howling Mine. Playing another Howling Mine. And this is going to be tricky as well for both players here because Avert knows I really have to start attacking before my opponent goes off with his prison combo. And Hank also knows I have to get my defenses going because he can deal me five damage a turn the way it looks like, uh, the way it is right now. 
Now let's see what he's going to do. Going for three here, so not using the other mana, so I'm expecting him to play out something. Paying two here. Ooh, playing a time walk. There's a counter spell, and maybe this was anticipated because he still has two mana open here. Maybe playing a Shatter. No idea if he plays Shatter's main, by the way. And paying two, and there it is. There's the Shatter. <laughs> I guessed that right. I was already thinking, I mean, knowing a player like Avert and, and he sees two blue open, he kind of knew, okay, there is a chance here that he's going to, to counter one of my spells. He's playing a City of Brass, playing a Soul Ring. Ooh, and are we going to see a stasis here taking a damage? No, there's a Kismet. So he's still kind of working towards that lock. And now Kismet means that everything that Aver brings into play comes into play tapped. Drawing even an extra card here now because there are two Howling Minds in play, meaning, meaning both players get to draw three cards every turn. Let's see what's going to happen. And, oh yeah, there's that Mishra's Factory. So it comes into play tap because of the Kismet. And that is already relevant because now Avert cannot use it to pump his Factory Worker if he chooses to attack. Paying three, another Satch Troll. And the other Satch Troll also comes into play tapped, as Hank pointed out. So he is on nine and he really needs to play. Ooh, this is interesting. He is playing the Tabernacle at Penrillville. And this is a legendary land that reads all creatures now require an upkeep cost of one. And if you can't pay for it, it basically uh, it gets destroyed. Now, not a lot of people know that this is called the Tabernacle at Penrillville. Usually it's just called Tabernacle, but I think a card that's so cool kind of deserves me to pronounce the whole name. In the meantime, by the way, uh, Hank has uh, played a Time Twister. So both players are going to draw a completely new hand. And obviously Hank is looking for a Stasis. If you can play a Stasis now, it would mean that all the creatures, the Setch Trolls are going to be destroyed. There is a Time Vault. Does he have a Twiddle perhaps? And he does not. Ay, 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 ay. So this is going to be tricky. Avert will now have to pay, because of the Tabernacle, so has to pay two. Because of the upkeep cost, there's also the Black Vice trigger, so taking a little bit of damage here. But I feel that Hank really needed... Yeah, he's going to... This is it. That's exactly nine. Oh, and just bad luck here for Hank. He really just needed or Twiddle or he needed a, uh, a stasis, preferably a stasis, because that would have probably given him the game. So interesting. So both players are now going to their sideboards and we'll catch them back in game number two. Game number two with Hank, the player of the stasis full deck on the play. After losing that game, I still think it's kind of bad luck that he couldn't find a single stasis in that match. I mean, there were so many cards being drawn. And look at that, there's a Mox, and there's a Quick Howling Mine. And let's see if Hank has some more luck in this matchup. There is a Mox Ruby from Avert. If he can play it at third land, maybe he can play a Setch Troll. And there is a Shatter, I think that's a great decision here. And a Strip Mine really setting Hank back here. I think it's a really good decision. And that kind of reminds me of this classic play that we used to have when somebody would play a Howling Mine, you kind of knew, okay, next turn, he's gonna just get an extra card and play a Disenchant. <laughs> and that's usually what happened. And, uh, and here it happens in the form of a Shatter. And look at this, so he's going completely on. Will there be some kind of counter spell? No, there will not. And he's going completely on the land destruction road here. After that strip mine, also taking care 
of that single island. And there's another island here by Hank, and it's it's not looking good for him here in the second game. Of course, both players are still on 20. Oh, look at that. There's a sinkhole. Oh, and there's really a land destruction package now that Avert is playing. Also a Black Lotus. Oh, and things are really looking bad here for Hank. On 16, second the Lotus. And here he is playing a Nevenerals disc. At least Hank is finding a Tundra, finding something. But with his deck, he's so far behind right now. He needs a little miracle. I wonder if he plays balance, because those kind of cards can kind of get you back when you're far behind. Also an Ancestral Recall. I mean, he's, he's going to need some exceptionally strong cards here to kind of at least get back in a 50-50 situation here. He's now on 14 and facing that disc that obviously Aver doesn't need to activate here, but it's, it's always there. It's always this threat that Hank has to keep in the back of his mind. Ay, 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 a shatter here on the Mox. And his mana are just being attacked in such a brutal way this turn. Playing a Mox Sapphire, at least being able now to counter having that two blue mana, but he's already on 10, just getting killed here by the factory. And the Library of Alexandria is not going to help him right now. It's just a horrible top deck in this situation. Going to 8. Oh, he is actually able to activate it. Okay, so he does have enough cards in hand. Nice, I thought he didn't have enough. Then again, of course, he didn't play a lot because he, he doesn't have any, didn't have any mana or not a lot of mana to his disposal. So maybe he can do something here. Using the Loa again, so having eight in hand here. Playing a Chaos Orb, at least being able to defend himself from the Mishra's factory. And I guess, well, they're playing, they're playing casual. <laughs> it's a friendly match, so I guess he's allowed to uh, to change his mind or, or not. Oh, look at that. There is a Shatter. Oh, and I think this is very decisive here. Because, I mean, that Chaos Orb kind of was his last little itsy-pitsy stand. And there's an attack from the factory again. Going to six here. I mean, as, as long as you're still in the game, I guess you can still win, but th th this is really difficult. You can activate the Loa again. And we see the Tabernacle again. The Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale. Beautiful card, but it's not really going to help him here. Factories are just so incredibly strong. Attacking again. And he's going to four now. And drawing an extra card here at the end step. And then, interesting here, look at this the twiddle. I wonder, this probably came from the sideboard. Or is he playing that in combination with the Nevernerals disc? Very cool, you don't see that often. But of course, twiddle and Nevernerals disc, that's a pretty good combination. And let's see what Hank can do. It's always kind of hard to follow these discussions. He's just drawing for turn, I guess. Playing a Black Lotus and a Mox Pearl. I mean, it is beautiful, beautiful to see the cards in play here, but is it really going to help him? So much power on the board, but then again, so little power, really not the power he needs right now. Paying two and there's a Howling Mine. Not really something that Avert will be scared of at this moment. But we don't know what's still in his hand. I mean, he is on four, so in theory he will still have an extra turn. And that's probably what he's hoping for. I mean, you have to play according to your outs when you're in this situation. Look at that, an activation of the disc. Will there be a counter spell? There's a twiddle at least saving him some damage. Or is Avert? Ooh, a red elemental blast. And Avert is just not having it. And there's a counterspell on the red elemental blast. 
Will there be another one? Oh, there's another one. Oh, oh. Ooh, for a moment there, I thought Hank was going to play another counter spell or maybe a blue elemental blast, but that's not happening. And look at that. He's going to two. It just feels like this game, Averett had all the answers, all the answers. I mean, Hank is drawing pretty good cards, but there's just nothing that he can do. This, I mean, this must be game. Demonic Tutor, he cannot play that out. Let's see. Activating, going in for two. That's, that's it. That's game. I really feel like the land destruction here was, was key at the start. And just, you know, Hank was just way too far behind to get back. And then that great use of the Shatters, brutal moment uh, with that Red Elemental Blast war. And uh, yeah, that's it. But beautiful cards, beautiful game. Uh, thank you, Hank and Avert. And thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. Don't click away yet because I have something interesting to show you. Thank you for sticking around because this is what I wanted to show you. Timmy Talks has now reached Patreon. So I have my very own, own Patreon page. How exciting is that? I'm like, I'm really happy. Um, if you want to, you can now support the show financially. Uh, and you can do so starting with just one dollar so you can enroll as an apprentice here one dollar and i have three tiers in total so you can be an apprentice wizard a protocol sorcerer or a pirate ship so for one dollar two dollar dollars or five dollars and i'm really happy that i already have nine patrons in a moment um, i will show you who those patrons are so thank you very much patrons so far for supporting me and if you're interested or curious please take a moment to visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash timmytalks and you can have a look at my site and you can kind of see what you can expect when you become a member of a specific tier and also you can see what I would like to spend the money on and I can tell you that all the money is going to improving the channel and making even better content. So thank you for your time and for now let's take a look at the credits and see who my patrons are. And here they are, the first patrons of Timmy Talks. Somebody can see.